Stephanie, first of all, can I just get a bit of background about what is this Parkinson's specific MER? Um, the project started with um, an educational event for pharmacists to learn uh, more about Parkinson's disease. And then we were approached by a pharma company who said, what more can we do? And out of that came um, an advisory board and uh, a development of a Parkinson-specific medicine juice review. That was piloted by eight pharmacists in northwest London. They'd all had input into the um, uh, medicine juice review content. Um, and the results came back, they were very favorable, um, not just for the patients, but for the pharmacists as well. Um, so last year at the uh, pharmacy show, right here, um, we recruited more people, and with the help of the C&D, we recruited more people, LPF networks, recruited more people. And phase two, um, which is currently running, um, has 29 active pharmacists from all over the UK who have been um, accredited to uh, undergo the consultation with their patients. Um, they've got the toolkit, um, they've watched a webinar explaining how to use the toolkit, and they are all doing these specific Parkinson's MURs. Um, so you mentioned the pharmacy toolkit you've created. Um, you've did the toolkit and completed sort of training with it. How did you find undertaking that? Because it, it, it was how many hours? It's about 10 hours, um, and I think I probably spent the full time on it um, simply because there's a, a lot of knowledge to get there. And certainly the point I would make for this, a lot to learn to give a good quality MUR. So it's invaluable to do the... Um, project toolkit um, so you can give a good quality MUR. Beforehand, if uh, MUR had came up, do you think you would have been able to do it well enough to sort of help the patient or do you think you would have struggled? I'm sure I would have struggled. I, in fact, I know I did because I would talk about the facts of drug side effects, which I knew at a, a fairly surface level, but you really would struggle with some of the multiple conditions. Um, was it a side effect? Was it a problem with Parkinson's? So you would have helped as much as you could, but the ones I've done since the training, I'm so much more happy with. Um, and so where are we on the phase two side of things? We've, you've got some feedback so far, obviously you're, you're still collating it, is that correct? Yes, the um, evidence is still being collected and um, analyzed, um, but the overall um, vision that we're seeing is that uh, everybody is happy with this, even the GPs. Um, does that surprise you? Well, yeah, it, it, it does because, well, not, I suppose not really because GPs don't have a good knowledge of Parkinson's. They're not allowed to um, change or amend medication for Parkinson's. That can only be done by the specialist. But um, they are welcoming the help that we are giving. Um, so 60, I think 65% of GPs were, were it, favorable uh, of what we're doing and I think Chris can actually fill you in a bit more on that because he's now being asked to review patients. So Chris that's the case you've been spoken speaking to your GPs and they've been saying similar things? Yeah the local GPs um, in, in our part of the world in Melksham um, have found it very useful to be able to push patients in our direction um, simply to make sure that we've got timings right that we've got regimes right. Um, there's quite lengthy waiting lists for specialist appointments and there's a lot we can do in the meanwhile um, to make sure that, you know, is the dose correct? Could we add dispersible drugs in? Things that the GPs are quite happy to, to consider um, or do we just need to treat some of the side effects better um, and make sure and, or is it time to refer back to the specialists with, with suitable insistence about speed? Yeah. Um, so Christopher just mentioned referring back to the specialists. What other sort of interventions have happened through these here Parkinson-specific MERs? Um.
Um, well, there were a couple of cases of patients um, with a dry mouth being prescribed uh, pastels or sprays. Uh, there was one patient with low blood pressure um, who had their medicines reviewed and no longer have dizzy spells, which is um, if you're not good on your feet anyway and you've not got good balance or um, movement, um, you don't want to be dizzy as well. Um, just really quite obvious things that you would expect, um, you know, n n the patients would be able or GPs would be able to support their patients with but they were being overlooked and until you sit down in a conversation with the patient and ask them what their problems are um, which no GP has got time to do really um, you, you, you just don't know what difficulties they're experiencing and of course um, Parkinson's UK are very very supportive for patients so highlighting their service and signposting patients to the um, support that they can give is also a, a must um, because they offer lots and lots of support. So what's next for the service? <laughs> right. Well, I mean, my dream is to have, um, as you have Parkinson's nurses who are specialists, to have Parkinson's pharmacists who are specialists. We can't possibly expect for every single pharmacist to upskill themselves and be experts in Parkinson's disease. But we could have a cohort of trained pharmacists who could step in, in, the, in where there is a lack of a Parkinson's nurse and they could visit pharmacies and carry out the consultations with Parkinson's patients if it's all booked and, and you know, organised. It could, it could be a really good um, intervention service. We're hoping the PSNC are going to uh, support this as a new service and drive it forward for us. Um, they've collected all the data on their Farm Outcomes website, uh, which has been really helpful. Um, and we hope that it will, won't stop here. We want to take it to phase three. I think also to look at um, pharmacists in care homes, um, pharmacists that take care of uh, elderly people, and um, GP practice pharmacists who um, maybe are reviewing patients' medication um, we'll be seeing Parkinson's patients as well. well. I'm really excited to see what it holds in the future, um, but thank you very much Stephanie and thank you Christopher for your time today.